Welcome CSE 121 to EX 22 through 25. This one will probably just be 22. And what we're doing with this section of our content in Python is just reviewing opening text files and writing text files and reading text files. All those kind of things we'll do here. And it's not the most exciting thing in the world, so we'll run through it pretty quick. Uh, these are the instructions here, and we'll, I'll probably even change some of these things because some, some things have changed since, I, since we did this in class and since I was working on the video. So we're going to change some of these things, but hopefully it'll be simpler. But one thing, you're going to need this sheet, which is under Documents and Resources in Unit 7. It's a PDF. You can just open it up. Also, if you go to Coursework, if you scroll down to Unit 7, you'll find the file for EX22. I'll have to reorder these, but it has EX22 here. And actually, if you click on the link, this is the repellent that you can actually fork. That means when you click on it, when you fork it, it'll be part of your repel. So I'll click here because you can see it says HOMA WCCC. It's part of that. But I'm actually logged in as HOMA RCN, my different account. So if I fork it, you can see it'll be part of HOMA RCN. And if you fork, it'll be part of yours. And what's going to be in here, there's already going to be a text file in here that has this QB data text. You can either drag and drop a text file in here you can make a new file. They have a little button here. You can make a file, and I won't do it right now, but you could copy and paste text right into it. You could do this, and I'll just put sample.txt. You can do this, and you could go to, this is the chapter we're working on, and wherever you found this stuff, you I mean, you, you could go, you could highlight this whole thing, copy it, and come back to your repel, and go in here for sample text, and paste it and then you'd have another version of it in there. So that's one way to do it, but I'm giving you one that you already have in here, so I'm going to delete this one. And you're going to be working on your Python file, which is the main.pi. And I have it stacked right now, so it'll be easier to see. And I'm going to just copy this first line, because this is the most important. This is the way you open a text file through Python. So I'll just paste this in here. And again, we're setting a variable that's running this open function and notice that you have to have the file name which is the same as that and it has to be in quotes and you have to have a comma and then you're going to tell how you're going to open it and we're going to use R. You can use R for reading, W for writing, there's also A for amending it but we're going to start with R right now and notice they're all in quotes. They could be double or single quotes and the first thing you can do here just to mess around and try it out and see what happens is just print out uh, using the read function and by using this variable, it'll, by using this variable, it'll make some of our other statements a little easier to write. So we could just say print qb file dot read, and that's just representing open, you know, that open file. If I print this out, you can see there's the whole file beginning with Colt McCoy. There's also a couple other things. There's read line that you could run, which does one line. There's read lines that you could do, which does all the lines. It also shows you all the commas, all the, the line breaks and everything that's in there, the things that the hidden characters that you don't normally see. Those line breaks are what Python will use to kind of see where there's a new line. If I do read line and I put in a number like that, it'll just do the characters that are in there, Colt, the first of the first line. And what we're going to do is we're going to be, be looping things. We'll use a for loop to loop things, even though it may, we, you can use a while loop as well but I think we'll just start with a for loop. And some of these things here, I'll just show you what this is really quickly. If I did this twice, if I did this read line twice, it would return two names for me. It would print out two names for me. And if I'd actually make a variable, and I'd say line equals, and if I did that, and then I printed line, too many parentheses here, and always, when you see those red wavy lines, always check it out because they're never wrong. It's always something you did. So if I print out line here, now it's printing out Michael Vick. And if I print line again, it's going to keep printing that variable that I created. So that's all That's all to be aware of there. From That's just the first part. Now, this second part here, and I actually want you to, well, you, you could use this thing here. Let's just use this just to show what happens because this is something I saw afterwards. And I'm going to get rid of all these things here. And if you say for I, if you just iterate through QB file, and you say line equals that, and then you kind of create a variable here. What's going to happen? It's going to print it out, except it's not going to print Colt McCoy. It almost goes through the first line before it realizes there's a line, and then it starts with the next one. So what's actually easier here is actually, if you wanted to print everything, it would be actually easier just to print I. And then it would just print everything. Or you could do something in range 
if you wanted to do a number, you could do in range, you know, like 10 or something, or I'll do five, it'll be easier to see on screen now, in range five, except right now, if you did that, it would just print numbers. So you'd make sure that you, we did that line thing, let me put that back in there, and now if you print line, it'll do that range, and let's just see what comes out by doing that. So for I in range five, line equals that, print line, Okay, so now it's doing the first five. It's starting with zero, one, two, three, four, five. And if you're not sure, look over here, and you can see McCoy, Freeman, Vic, Schaub, and Rivers are the first five in that list. What you also should do at the end, and if we use the with, there's another method where you could use with that we'll do for the other exercises. You can actually just put qbfile.close and make sure that you close it at the end. For what we're doing here in Repellent, you're not going to really see much. Um, but you, but you want to close, especially if you're working locally on a machine, you want to close it. Okay, so that's what's happening there. So we can print a number, we can do that, and let's just check out our exercises here. We're going to do this thing, skip the while loop right now, and even if you look at, this is I think 11.4, if you go down here, they have this, they have it exactly in a for loop, and the for loop works fine, because we could still pick out numbers, we could still choose how many lines, we could run through all the lines, so I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to copy this to save some time and not use the while loop right now. I'll put that in there and just replace this. Now I got to change what I have because it was now it says for a line in QB file if you want to change it to line because that's what I've been doing. Just make sure you, you're consistent everywhere. And what they're doing here is they're saying QB file. Now I don't think we need a space here or a space here. I'm going to get this out even though it's copied right from how to think like a computer scientist. I don't think we need a space there. The comma in this print setting will automatically put a space, unless you wanted more, unless you wanted an extra one there. But that should be fine. So what's actually happening here, it's taking, it's creating a new list called variable, called values, and it's splitting the line. So each line it's splitting and it's making a list. So there's going to be a values list, multiple list name values. It's just going to keep recreating it as it goes through this loop. And it's looking at values as this being zero. So if you look at each line as a list, this is going to be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're using ten and we're using zero and one. We're saying Colt McCoy has a QB rating of 74. And you can actually has a blank, you could use QB, but we're just going to put a string in of QB. Um, although that QB is always the third one, unless somebody has three names. We could try just var varying it a little bit. This could this could really be values three. That should work fine too. So again, we're going to say for line in, or you could say for line in QB file values equals that. And I think you can also do. We didn't create a variable for line, but I guess it's just it's just using. This could be, I guess this could be I if you want. Like what we're doing here, you could say I, and this could be I really, and that's fine. So. So we're not really creating a variable of line or anything, and same thing, that's just like a temporary one that's in there. I'll keep it as line, which is which works fine. We didn't create a variable here that's a read line or anything like that. So we're just going through and doing that, so it's just splitting it. So now we can't tell how many lines right now. So far it's just printing everything out, and that's fine. Now if you wanted to do a, a range, we could change that. So let's just let's just skip over this right now. And we're gonna do something on the next page. It says it says comment out your for loop and create a while. Let's just leave the for loop. See if we could do this with a for loop. And we're going to print out the number of lines printed. So we could create a variable named num, num lines. We'll make it be like a little counter that can actually go through and do that. And we'll see how that works. So let's try this out. And that way we could, we could kind of print out our number of lines. Now, I used a while loop in this example here. Let's see if we could do it with a for loop. We'll just try it now. I'm going to say for i in range see if this will work if we use just I in here. And what we should do is say line equals read line and make sure you put QB file before it dot read line and here I'll do line and we'll just oh, our only issue is that may, that it won't get the first line. But I think when we did a number it did. So we'll, hopefully that works. So we're saying we're going to run through eight times just like we do making polygons and stuff with turtles and we're going to create a variable here that represents reading a line and then values is going to represent the list that's going to be created you know and I'll just put here creates list and let's see what happens now and there we have eight 
and that's actually what we want. So that works just as good as doing the while loop. I think we have eight if we count them down here, and it has Colt McCoy, the first one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight here. And if we wanted to put a counter in here, we could just put num lines, I think I called it. And I'll make it zero. I'll put it in here. I'll do it after this so that it generates one after it actually creates it. So I'll, I'll say num lines equals, and actually equals plus equals one, so it adds. And then at the very end here, I'll just put print num lines. So that should print at the end of everything. So let's see what happens here. So again, we're making a little counter here. After it creates a line, we're saying, okay, add to that. And then hopefully it should print out how many we have. And there it says eight. And obviously you could put make it a string or whatever. And let's try 12. And there's 12. Let's try, let's try 50. Let's just see what happens. Okay, so it went out of the range. It looks like we had a problem here because it did go to the end, but it had it went out of the range. So you had an issue if it went over, whereas if you had a while loop, it would know to stop. We would have to know here that we had 30, 34 here unless we put something, put it at 34. You should be able to get 34. And that's that's the most you can get. If you put 35, you're gonna get an error. And you, we could put in a some kind of if if statement to sort of if it gets to the end so it doesn't do that anymore. But for now, that's all I want you to do with this one. And then we'll move on to EX23. So for EX22, this is fine. We're going to start writing a file with EX23. So we'll stop here with this. If you did this, whether you used a while loop or whatever, that's fine for right now. Um, as long as you're getting getting that to work out, that's the idea that you're just kind of that you're just kind of writing that you're reading from that file and you're just kind of outputting information by running through a loop. You could do a while loop or you could do a for loop right now, but with for loop we have to know exactly how many we have.